Greetings, booktubers, and welcome back to Grammaticus Books. Welcome to a Steve Donahue BroTube Top 10 Movie Challenge episode of Grammaticus Books. And if you're not familiar with these uh, videos, uh, th this is how these videos typically work. Um, I will put up my top 10 list on the top 10 movies in whatever genre that Steve and I decide upon, uh, usually early on a Friday morning like this one. And then later in the afternoon, Steve will come in and do his top 10 list, which he will he will import in the state that is the actual top 10 list, the true top 10 list. Don't believe him. It's not true. Mine are the actual top 10 list. His are all pretenders to the throne. And then during his video, he will attempt to uh, malign and disparage my picks with, uh, with his vain and feeble attempts to poke holes in them. But I'm sure that you will recognize that, in fact, my picks will be the superior picks. I have confidence in your ability to see through, see through his shenanigans to the true top 10 picks. And it's a lot of fun. We have a good time with it. And over the last couple of episodes that we've done of this, uh, numerous other booktubers have jumped in and joined in with it. Uh, and this is open to any booktuber who wants to uh, throw their hat into the ring. And in this case, we're doing it would be the, the Western hat, the 10 gallon hat getting thrown into the ring because this episode is the top 10 Westerns. Now, this is also June, which is June on the range which is a booktube event, which was created by the great Michael K. Vaughn over on his fantastic channel. I will link Steve Donahue and Michael K. Vaughn's uh, both fantastic channels down in the comments section below, or the description below, I should say. Go over and check them out. But as part of June in the Range, uh, Michael K. Vaughn has sent out a, uh, an invitation to everybody participating in June in the Range, all those booktubers, to do their own top 10 Western movie list. So there should be a bunch of them coming out today Check all your favorite booktubers. And like I said, this is open to any booktuber who would like to throw their 10 gallon hat into the ring. Um, so that's it. That's what we're doing here. The top 10 Western, best Western movies of all time as per Grammaticus, which means it's the right list. And we're just going to jump into it and kick it off with number 10. We're going in ascending order 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And number 10 is Blazing Saddles. Yes, that's right. Uh, Mel Brooks' 1974 parody of the West, Blazing Saddles, starring uh, Cleavon Little, Gene Wilder, uh, Madeline Kahn, Harry Cor uh, Harvey Corman, pardon me, and uh, Madeline Kahn is the uh, the fantastic and uh, memorable Lilith von Stupp in there, and uh, Harvey uh, Harvey Corman is the bad guy. He's the uh, the evil railroad baron who's trying to take over the town. Uh, Cleavon Little is the black sheriff that's elected to defend the town, and it is hysterical. This movie, I didn't realize that this movie was actually co-written uh, by Mel Brooks and Richard Pryor, which is probably one of the reasons why it is just so funny. It is a fantastically funny movie, a uh, parody of the Old West. I love it to death. You can watch it over and over, uh, and it was uh, nominated for three Academy Awards. So that is number 10, Blazing Saddles, which brings us to number nine which is a John Wayne movie. You've got to have a John Wayne movie in the top 10 Westerns. Anybody who doesn't put at least one John Wayne movie in the top 10 Westerns, I would say that that would be an automatic disqualifier, an automatic party foul, which you would knock their top 10 list out. And this is True Grit uh, from 1969. Wow, 1969? That doesn't seem right. I'm going to double check. I think it was much later than that. I'm going to have to double check that uh, that year. If I'm wrong, I will put it up right here with the correct year. But my notes say 1969, so we're rolling with that right now. But it's John Wayne and Kim Darby. John Wayne is Marshall Rooster Cogburn. This is late in his career. He is playing a washed-up, uh, alcoholic U.S. Marshal uh, out in the far western territories uh, who goes out and rounds up, uh, rounds up criminals who are wanted by the United States government. And Kim Darby plays a uh, young lady whose father was murdered by one of their ranch hands who turns on her father. And she hires uh, Marshal Rooster Cogburn, this washed up drunk U.S. Marshal, to go out and hunt down uh, the killer of her father. It has a uh, young Robert Duvall in it. It's got a young Dennis Hopper. It's John Wayne in a really unusual role for a Western where he is he's not this uh, this shining hero who's always doing everything the right way. He's this gritty uh, old drunk, but he's got all kinds of character. Uh, he's got all kinds of uh, determination, and he's been through it all out there in the far west. 
And it's just a wonderful, wonderful character that John Wayne uh, builds in this movie, True Grit, that shines through and fortunately overpowers the rather annoying performance uh, by Kim Darby as the young girl who go, winds up going with him on this adventure, this quest to get her father's murderer. She is a little bit of a downer in the movie, and that's why I've got it at number nine. Otherwise, this would be up much higher. Uh, a John Wayne actually won an Academy Award for his performance portrayal of Rooster Cogburn uh, in this movie. So it comes in true grit at number nine, John Wayne, which brings us to number eight on our list, which is Winchester 73. This is a fantastic black and white movie from 1950. It's a 1950 movie called Winchester 73, starring James Stewart, uh, Shelley Winters, and Rick, or pardon me, Rock Hudson, a very young Rock Hudson, and a very young Tony Curtis. I just recently watched this movie. I hadn't seen it before. I saw that it was getting a lot of traction out on the internet as one of the classics. I pulled it up and took a, a watch through of it, and it is a wonderful, wonderful film. It is about a Winchester 73 rifle. It was a prize rifle called One in a Thousand that was issued, and it's won by James Stewart. And as soon as he wins it, almost immediately it is stolen from him. And then the story follows the trail of this Winchester 73 rifle as it goes from hand to hand to hand, from person to person, and just death and destruction follow the rifle. And it culminates in uh, James Stewart and his brother coming to a, uh, a final conclusion, a final duel at the movie. And it is very, very well done. The thing that struck me about this movie is people always talk about deconstructing the Old West, how uh, all of these movies, these Hollywood movies from the 50s and 60s, they build up this mythical uh, sort of pristine vision of the Old West uh, that hid the true kind of gritty nature of it, the true uh, underside of it. If you watch this movie from 1950, Winchester 73, there is no, there's nothing to deconstruct. They have deconstructed it all the way back in 1950. And I think the reason for that is these are people who grew up in the Great Depression. They grew up under hardship conditions and they had no illusions about what the Old West was like. And it comes through in this movie. And it's one of the reasons why this movie is so good. And Jimmy Stewart uh, does a fantastic job in this movie as well. So you got Winchester 73 at number eight, which takes us to number seven. Number seven is an all-time classic, Shane from 1953. Everybody knows this movie, Shane. It is starring uh, Alan Ladd and uh, Jean Arthur uh, as the female lead in this. And Alan Ladd is the mysterious gunman that comes into this town, uh, into this remote, isolated village where a cattle baron is trying to uh, take over the town for his uh, evil purposes. You've got all these railroad barons and cattle barons. It's the uh, the ubiquitous uh, villain villainy out there in the Old West. And of course, it comes down to uh, the showdown with Shane and these uh, cattle barons, uh, cattle barons, evil people at the end of the movie. And it has that classic line from the end of the movie. Uh, it won an Academy Award for Best Cinematography. The cinematography out here in the wide open West this, with the mountains in the background is just spectacular. And it was nominated for five other Academy Awards. And for that, Shane's got to come in there at number seven which takes us to number six, which gets us almost halfway through our list. And the number six movie, one of the all-time classics, and that is High Noon from 1952. We've had three movies here in a row now from the 1950s, a great decade for our Westerns. High Noon starring Gary Cooper and uh, uh, Grace Kelly. You got Grace Kelly and Gary Cooper up on the screen at the same time. That alone, in and of itself, those two fantastic uh, actors, actor and actresses, actress, would be enough to put it on here on this list. But the story is fantastic as well. It's Gary Cooper, who's a uh, U.S. Marshal. He's in this town, and there's a gang of killers, but he has his beautiful new wedded wife, and he's got to make a decision whether he can take his wife and leave trying to face a gang of killers by himself, or if he has to do the right thing in order to protect the town and stand up to the killers. And, of course, you know what happens. Uh, it had four Academy Awards. It's a wonderful, wonderful flick. And for that reason, it comes in here at number six on the list, rounding out our bottom five. So now we're going to move on to the top five, the top five Westerns of all time, as determined by Grammaticus, going five, four, three, two, one. So coming in at number five in our top five is 310 to Yuma. And 310 to Yuma, this is the 2007 remake. This is not the original from 1957. The remake is actually far better, far more entertaining. This is a great movie. I love watching this movie. It stars Russell Crowe, Christian Bale, Peter Fonda, Alan Tudyk, 
and it is about a, a desperate rancher who volunteers to take this criminal, this very dangerous criminal who is Russell Crowe, and take him across town, get him from the sheriff's office to the train, the 310 train to Yuma and justice at Yuma. But the gang of uh, Russell Crowe has come into town and they have offered $200 to anybody who will kill a marshal or help them get their boss, Russell Crowe, back from the marshals. And as soon as they hear this, the marshals hear this, they all desert and leave Christian Bale by himself to try to take Russell Crowe to the train against this gang of, uh, of professional killers. And he's just this rancher. And he has to do it because his, the life of his wife and his kids basically depend upon it. And there's a line in this movie that I, that I love that's just great. After fighting his way halfway across the town, dragging uh, Russell Crowe with him uh, halfway across the town to get to the train, he looks over at Christian Bale, that is, looks over at Russell Crowe, and he goes, I just want you to know I'm not stubborn. And Russell Crowe gives him this look that is just classic. The eyebrow goes up and he's just like, you're not stubborn? It's like, that one look says it all. You're the most stubborn human being I've ever met in my life. If you haven't seen this movie, I highly recommend it. It's a really good movie and that's why I've got it at number five. So number four, number four is The Magnificent Seven. You knew it had to be on here somewhere. This is from 1960. It's a remake of the classic Kurosawa film from 1954, The Seven Samurai. It stars Yul Brynner, Steve McQueen, Steve Mr. Cool McQueen, uh, Charles Bronson, Robert Vaughn, Brad Dexter, James Coburn. I love James Coburn. Anything that he's in is going to be fantastic. Horst Buchholz, and it is a just wonderful movie. It mimics the, the uh, story of Seven Samurai is that these seven gunslingers, these seven hired guns get hired by a uh, small village in Mexico that is beset by bandits to come and defend the town. I think everybody knows this story. If you haven't seen this one, I, I can't believe you're watching this and you haven't seen this movie. If you haven't, go out immediately and watch it. It's a wonderful, wonderful movie. It did not do well in the box office in the United States. It actually did poorly, amazingly, with all that star power, but it did fantastic and made a ton of money over in Europe. There was a remake from 2016 of this that they did. It's terrible. Don't watch the remake. Don't watch the 2016. Go get the original 1960 version. It is wonderful, and it is number four. So that gets us to our top three here on the list. Now, these top three, they could have been in any order. I've put them uh, three, two, one, but really you could put any one of these at number one. And coming in at number three is not a movie it is actually a TV series, and it's the TV series Gunsmoke, which ran from 1955 to 1975. It ran for two decades. They had 635 episodes with Marshall Matt Dillon, played by James Arness, who just was wonderful. He was perfectly cast in that role. It's Dodge City. You've got Miss Kitty. You've got Festus. You've got Burt Reynolds, who comes in and plays a, a, a supporting role in this for a, a, a period of time. It's an American Iliad and the Odyssey. That's how it's been described, and I wouldn't argue with that at all. I, I have a, I work part time in a building where we have a break room. We have a, a locker room where we go in and we sit down at lunch, and we have our lunch, and we've got a TV with a cable in there. It's just basic cable running into it, and one of the channels has got gun smoke on it every day at uh, one o'clock, which is when I take my lunch. And we come in and we put Gunsmoke up on the TV. We watch Gunsmoke, 635 episodes. And as you can imagine, some are better than others, but there are so many of these episodes that are just wonderful. And again, people talk about having to deconstruct the Old West, the, the vision that Hollywood did of the Old West. And no, you don't. It has already been done. Uh, Gunsmoke and Winchester 73, they present a vision of the Old West that I think had all the true grit and nastiness to it and didn't... Uh, didn't sit there and whitewash it. And this is another show that does that. It's a great, great show. The Iliad and the Odyssey of the American West. And it's the stuff of legend. That's the only way to describe it. Gunsmoke, Gun Smoke, James Arness, and the stuff of legend at number three. So coming in at number two is actually a trilogy of movies. Uh, and, it, and I've got these this trilogy grouped together because if I list them individually, every single one of them would be here on the top 10 list and it would take up 30% of the list. And, and I didn't think that was fair. So I grouped them all together and that is the Man With No Name trilogy. This is the good, the bad, and the ugly for a few dollars more and for a fistful of dollars. Clint Eastwood, Lee Van Cleef, 
Eli Wallach is the bad and the good, the bad and the ugly, who just does a fantastic job as a character actor in that one. You've got Lee Van Cleef, who is the bad guy in the, in the good, the bad and the ugly. And then he's a good guy in one of the other films. He's spectacular. And what can you say about Clint Eastwood? Clint Eastwood just defines the role as the, uh, the Old West gunslinger, the Old West bounty hunter with just a ton of charisma. He just absolutely uh, defined that role, redefined that role under the director Sergio Leone, who is just a, a visionary with these uh, with these Western films. These are the spaghetti Westerns. And Sergio Leone's vision for the Western, he reshaped it. It represented a seismic ground shift in how Westerns were filmed and how they were represented. And he did it all through his, uh, his star, uh, Clint Eastwood. And they're wonderful, wonderful films, all three of them. And that's why they come in at number two, which leaves us with number one, Number one, greatest Western of all time. And if you've been paying attention, there's a there's a movie on here that I'm sure is going to be on virtually everybody's list. I haven't talked about it yet. And it is the 1993 film Tombstone. This is a fantastic film. I love this film to death. It is endlessly rewatchable. There are some fantastic quotes out of this movie. It's filmed brilliantly. 1993, it's the shootout of the OK Corral uh, and with Wyatt Earp and the... Uh, and the Cowboys going head to head in the OK Corral. And then it also goes into the Wyatt Earp Vendetta ride afterwards. It stars Kurt Russell, Val Kilmer, Sam Elliott, Bill Paxton, Bill Paxton, and Michael Bean. Michael Bean is Johnny Ringo. Bill Paxton is one of the Wyatt Earp brothers. You've got Sam Elliott as the other Wyatt Earp brother. Uh, Kurt Russell is the uh, title character as Wyatt Earp, who comes into the town there in Dodge. And they set up their uh, their own saloon. Uh, in their own enterprise when they run afoul of the Cowboys. And then you got Val Kilmer as Doc Halliday. And Val Kilmer just kills it as the ailing Doc Halliday in this movie. He's wonderful. He has some of the most fantastic lines in this movie, such as, why Johnny Ringo, you look like somebody just walked over your grave, as well as many, many others. Me, uh, I, I should say, I and my coworkers love to quote this movie. It is just a spectacular Western wonderfully done uh and kurt russell turns in one of the performances of his career as well but uh, absolutely val kilmer stills the show and it's a wonderful wonderful recreation it's one of the most famous events in western history the shootout at the ok corral and it's so well done it's so watchable and that is the reason why it comes in at number one but i'd love to hear your thoughts what do you think is tombstone the number one movie of all time where does the man with no name trilogy fall what are your favorite movies Put them down in the comments section. And remember, when you're watching the other booktubers out there for June on the Range and the Top 10 Westerns, that you heard it here from Grammaticus first. This is the definitive list. Don't be swayed by anybody else. This is the one. But let me know what you think down in the comments section. And with that, I'm going to say take care, be safe, and I'll catch you guys next time.